Hello and welcome to section one of React D&D course. This section is an introduction to React D&D. In this section, I want to look at all the basic stuff that we need to know before we jump into React D&D and build really awesome projects with it. So the first and the so the first question we need to ask is what is React D&D? It's important to understand that React D&D is a higher order abstraction over all the drag and, uh, drag and drop methods that you can use in the browser. And React D&D is the abstraction that will stand between React itself and the DOM. And we will talk about this soon, but the main point here is to understand that uh, React D&D is a higher order abstraction. So it abstracts away all the inconsistencies in the browsers, the different browsers, the methods and everything, and gives you really simple APIs to work with in React. It can support different backend structures, and we will talk about what, a, what is a backend uh, soon, uh, like HTML5 backend, so where you can uh, support drag and drop on, on modern browsers, and touch um, backend, which is going to support things on touch screen as well. The second question is, why would you want to use React D&D? And I'm going to smash you with three really important reasons for this. The first thing is, drag and drop is actually quite hard to implement properly. The main reason for that is HTML5 standards are quite inconsistent. And you can see many um, uh, blog posts and articles about how inconsistent the HTML5 standards are. And I'll post these somewhere in the resources. The second thing is, it's quite simple and very powerful to do D&D uh, uh, &D interactions using React D&D &D because it's not limiting you at all. You can execute any functions on drag, any functions on drop, and you will see what I mean as we progress through this course. And the last thing, it's the best way to implement generally use D&D &D in React. And what I mean by this is there are other libraries that are made for uh, sortable lists that are made for specific use, which do that stuff very, very, very well and make it accessible, make it programmatic. And I know that you guys know React D&D &D beautiful, but this library is the best one for general use. Okay, so before we jump into React D&D &D and we jump into the code, there is many, many abstractions involved with React D&D, &D, and I want to take time to explain those abstractions slowly, and we need to understand each abstractions and each concept before we can deal with it. And this is what I'm going to attempt in the next couple of videos. Uh, so I want to first inspect the basic structure of what's happening in the DOM and where, where does React D&D &D actually sits in the structure that, uh, that we are like working with. So we all know that this is where React is and we all know that this is the actual DOM. This is what people see in the browser and the way React kind of uh, communicates and manipulates the DOM is using the virtual DOM. And there's a lot of magic there where you can make it faster, more reactive and all that stuff not really um, the scope of this course, but yeah, this is the basic structure that we know. But what's going on is that all the drag and drop events are happening on the DOM side. So we need a way to communicate and handle all those events and communicate them back to React. And this is exactly where the React D&D library comes in. So React D&D library kind of sits in between React and uh, the DOM elements or the DOM itself. And in that way, React D&D is actually uh, communicating both ways. So there is a lot of interactions happening between React D&D and the DOM, and a lot of interactions also happening between React D&D and React, as in the normal components, your other components that you actually write. And we are going to inspect both of these sides of these equations in a separate video. But in a general sense, between React D&D &D and the DOM, uh, the communication happens through backends, and it involves things like D&D events, whether it's dragging, is dragging, drag start, drag stop, drop, and so on. And there's something called item types. So each one of these things it's kind of an abstract concept that we have to explain. And you also, and when it comes to basic structure, I also want to tell you know that the way uh, the DOM kind of like communicates everything into React D&D &D, or the way React D&D &D kind of like takes that useful information from the DOM is through something called monitors. 
So this is kind of like the half where React DND interacts with the DOM. So a lot of things are happening between React DND and the DOM. They happen through the backends, they happen through item types, and they happen, of course, through DND events themselves. But the way all of this gets communicated back to React DND is through monitors. Okay, on the other side, we have React DND interacting with React. So we have something called collectors, we have the drag sources, and we have the drop targets. Again, those are three abstract concepts that we will explore in the next videos. Uh, but in generally speaking, the way React DND kind of communicates with your own uh, React components is through collectors. So the main two aspects here are monitors and collectors, but under the hood, there are other things happening, which is like backend DND events and item types and so on. Uh, I'm not gonna explain any more in this lecture. In the next lecture, we are going to take a look at the first half, which is between React DND and the DOM. I'll see you guys in the next one.